Hello and welcome to the Cameron and Tia show. I'm Tia and we're so excited to have you here. This month we are going through styling wedding day details. So we have two videos already uploaded. You can go check those out with some general tips and then going through a DIY hack that we use when we're in a pinch. Today I'm taking you behind the scenes with me. I'm going to be styling these details behind me for a wedding day. It's actually Cam's sister Shelby and her fiance Juan. Um, I am styling them before the wedding day. That is why I am in biker shorts and a sweatshirt. Um, but we are helping to photograph their wedding and so we were able to do this in advance. I know that's not typically how a wedding day goes. Typically during styling details time there is a lot going on. There are people coming to greet you. There are people coming to check in. And so I do have a lot more peaceful of a time. I'm outside enjoying the weather. Um, so take that with a grain of salt, but that's what allows us to film this video for you guys today. And um, because we have a little bit more time, I can just, the angles of the camera, all the things. So I'm gonna be styling everything. Um, they've got a pretty simple invitation suite. They're on a lot of extra pieces, like an accommodations card or an RSVP card. We know when we are starting out, a lot of our couples just had one piece of their invitation suite. Maybe an envelope, but the envelope wasn't jazzed up, so that wasn't something that we were necessarily, necessarily going to have in the flat light. So I'm gonna take you behind the scenes. Um, there's just gonna be some music and I'll be chatting through some stuff with you so that you can just take a look and see how our process looks. If you have any questions, just drop them in the comment section. We love to reply to your questions and it helps inspire future YouTube videos. So let's jump in. Okay, here we are getting started. That is actually just a cologne box that I'm using as a riser for the main invitation suite piece. I knew I wanted to raise it up significantly because we're gonna use pretty high florals. And so I want that piece to stand out. That's also the only piece in this invitation suite, so I really wanna make a statement with it. Then I'm adding the hair piece on the bottom there. I like to use both sides of the ring box, so that's the top of the ring box that I'm putting the groom's band and then um, the bride's band. I'm gonna also add in the tie because I think that brings in a really nice pattern. These are Holland D Design styling mats, which we love. They are hand painted. They are insane. I absolutely love them. And then you're going to see me adding the shoes. I don't always add the shoes to invitation suites. Sometimes I like to just keep it paper goods only, but because there's only this one piece, we want to jazz it up a little bit. Um, for florals, I'm adding in these roses. I love to um, take them right off of their stems as close as possible. And then I'm gonna open them up and just expand them slowly, slowly, slowly. One thing that you can do when they're still on their stems is you can kind of pull them back and forth, back and forth in between your hands, and then I'll allow them to open naturally. And then once I get them down, I'll open them even a little bit further. Then I'm adding in the perfume. Um, I love to use rose leaves. I think they're really, really fun. Um, and I think they bring a, like some great symmetry um, while still being obviously organic. I also love them in this instance because we're balancing the dark greens. So there was the invitation suite photo. I also got that horizontal photo of it um, to have a landscape option that's a little bit tighter. So then I'm bringing the rings onto the main invitation suite piece. I love to get close-ups of the rings this way, um, especially if there's some really fun typography. So I'm going to get their first name, Shelby and Juan. You can see I tried a couple different arrangements. Um, at first I was trying the engagement band inside the groom's band. I love to stand them up if possible, but um, just depending on the size, sometimes that doesn't work. So then we have this tight close-up. I think that's really nice contrasted in like a blog post against a larger, um, flat lay invitation image so then this is their envelope liner they actually gave it to us without the envelope so just the liner and because it's this really awesome pattern that I think ties into the colors that we're using plus obviously the roses that were styled um, I'm gonna use this a couple different ways so at first here I'm putting their earrings down. And what you have to do with earrings is just kind of adjust them and adjust them. Um, I will always take back soft earrings unless I'm gonna like balance them. So that's a rare case, maybe 5% of the time. But then these earrings are just threaded through. So I just have to play with them a little bit to get them to lay the way that I wanted. And then I decided that I wanted to just get a shot that's kind of um, the bride's details, but mainly just the engagement ring. And you can see the rest are kind of fading into the back. But it's fun because it has, again, that envelope liner pattern that's going to tie into things. So then I'm going to actually use this envelope liner again. I thought it brought some really fun contrast against the styling mat. And I am going to do a bride's vignette. So we'll often do a vignette for each person in the in the 
each person <laughs> um so we will do like one with all of the brides details and one with all the grooms details or one with the grooms and one with the other grooms um and so here i am styling on top of the envelope liner again i'm trying to get those rings to balance there i can't quite figure out what to do with the band because i know that the engagement ring is going to be so much higher than everything else that everything else is going to kind of fade out of focus so i actually bring in the other piece of the ring box so that i can put the band on there and then right now I'm kind of playing with those threaded earrings to get them to lay on that nicely so that they can all be at the same level there. Still playing, you'll see. It's just a game of trying to get them to lay right, lay in a way that looks nice and that looks kind of natural. And then I'm gonna bring in that hair piece again because that brings some fun sparkle. I think it's totally fine to have a, a level down from everything else because that doesn't necessarily need to be in focus. That's just something that's gonna add a little sparkle, a little jazz. And again, I'm gonna bring in those shoes. I found that there was a little scuff on them, so I'm gonna scrub that off. It's important to pay attention to details like that right now so that you're not having to deal with that in post-processing. Then I'm gonna pull the perfume in. I actually got rid of the perfume in the first invitation suite. I didn't like how it was a lighter green and then it felt like it didn't go well with all the other darker greens. It's one of those things where it's like they're almost too close but not the same, so they clash. So I pulled it out of that. It also had um, the black ribbon on it, which was nothing else that we saw in the main invitation suite piece. So that felt a little aggressive too. So I'm trying to figure out how I can get it in this bride's vignette so I can take care of it and have it have its own moment. Um, but it just didn't make sense in the full invitation suite piece. So then I'm bringing in the florals again. One thing you can see here is that I'm having trouble having the florals stand straight up, which is kind of okay with this image because it's gonna end up being a little bit like, oh, this just threw together, look how natural this is. But if you want to, you can get floral frogs. I'll link them in the description and you can then just pop the flowers right on top of them and then they hold the flowers straight up and down. So then here's this image. Fun. I think it looks nice. You can see all of her elements and then I also got a portrait of it so that we had the variety. Um, but again, I want it to look kind of natural like, oh, I just threw this together. These things naturally fell here. So then I'm taking this away. And I know again, what I was talking about earlier is that I want the perfume to have its own moment. So I'm gonna make a huge floral vignette for this so that it can have its moment. I'm still using the backdrop of the envelope liner. I just really liked that. I think it was tying in so many elements that we were using. So I think it made a lot of sense there. Now, at this point, I'm gonna start deconstructing flowers. So depending on how I got the flowers, if a florist gave me them and they were totally extra buds or um, they had them as a line item on their invoice of detail florals, so they are mine to keep, I'm gonna deconstruct them. So I like to try to keep them as constructed, is that the opposite of that, as possible at the beginning, and there is the image. Um, but then as I go, I can start breaking away and doing individual details, and then I start um, deconstructing them letting petals fall you could also see me like tossing them a bit wait one thing I love to keep my styling mat clean in between things especially with florals otherwise things will get squished on there and you may ruin your styling mats but I will just toss petals around until they lay nicely until they lay in a way that I like I find that if I try to place them individually it never looks quite right so I love clean classic shoe picks for the most part this is classic I love the way that the shoes laid it felt like they were kind of like opening up presenting because of the way that the heels are and then I also just got a classic straight up and down shoe pick, which I think is nice to have some variety. Then, final shot here, I am going to get a ring vignette. So I did already have one on the envelope liner, but I knew that I also wanted to balance out the envelope liner backdrop photos with just this classic pink. And so there you can see me tossing the petals around, got a portrait and then a landscape. Um, so that those can pair nicely for details. And then finally, I don't show it here, but I also did a stack of three so that you could see all three of the rings there. And then the last thing we'll be doing a groom's vignette, which you can see right there. You guys, thank you for joining. We have one more detail styling video coming at you next week. So stay tuned for that. Hit subscribe if you are not already. And have a wonderful day. Bye.